Okay, so I have something to share with you, but I'm not really quite sure how to word it yet. So I'm just going to keep recording this until it actually comes out right. You would think that as a writer I would write it first, but sometimes things just come to me really fast and I um, just got to get them out. So here it goes. Tonight I had a little bit of a rush of my past. I was confronted with a lot of feelings, a lot of situations, a lot of memories that I had repressed for a really long time. And <clears throat> all I did tonight was go out to dinner with a girlfriend of mine. And let's just first put it on the table that this is the first time that I have been out just for myself, just to have a good time because she actually paid and invited me to dinner because she is an awesome, wonderful childhood friend that wanted to get me out of the house. Um, I haven't been out in about a year, probably, or more, I don't even remember, um, that was not relating to either work or church or something else. So it was <clears throat> an opportunity for me to get dressed up and put on some heels and put on some fancy jewelry and and put on makeup, which obviously I ate and my lipstick came off, but it was an opportunity for me to just go out and feel beautiful and feel um, kind of like my, my myself again. I, I don't even want to say that because I feel like myself every day as a mom, but you know what I mean. So as I walked into this super hip, trendy place with lots of beautiful people and, you know, upbeat music that just made you want to dance and um, food that was just absolutely, I mean, you didn't even know how to pronounce half of the stuff, you know, we, we wanted to try a new place that um, was kind of eclectic and, and unique. And so um, we went to this really cool ramen noodle place that kind of blended Hispanic food. I don't know. It was really weird. It was, it was weird, but it was, it was yummy. It was good. So, you know, as I was sitting there, just looking around, wearing my heels, feeling all cute, all of a sudden I got this rush of uh, a memory and feelings that were attached to my past, to who I was. And I have not seen or been that woman in a really long time. And a lot of you don't know this, <laughs> but I mean, back in the day, over a decade ago, like, I mean, from 18 years old until about 27 years old, I was working in the bar scene, um, bartending, working the oxygen bar, working the front door, dancing, doing all kinds of things. And um, I had a really close-knit group of friends that I would hang out with, and I don't know, maybe some of them are watching this, but um, for a really long time, that was my family. That was my life. You know, I... I had gone from being the awkward skinny girl in high school that was, you know, not in the cool crowd, didn't have any confidence, would not even wear shorts because I was too self-conscious of my legs and just did not feel good about myself at all, to going to college and eventually getting to a place where I started to kind of come into my own, not just physically, but, you know, as far as my confidence a little bit. And I didn't want to be that awkward girl again. I didn't want to be that, um, I don't want to say ugly duckling, but that's how I felt, you know? And so I completely went to the other end of the spectrum and I started hanging out with beautiful people. And I started to, um, you know, kind of run in that scene, in that nightclub scene, um, not as the person that would go to the bar. I mean, I would, but, um, but, I mean, if you know anything about my personality, I'm kind of this take charge kind of girl. You know, I'm an entrepreneur by nature. I love connecting. I love making friends. So I just kind of became, you know, I, I just became the popular girl, I guess, one of the popular girls. And, and we had our crew and we would go out and, you know, we would bartend at different places and we knew people. We would go to strip clubs and we would know the owners and we would just go hang out and, you know, give the girls money. And I mean, this was my life, you know. My life was fun. My life was very um, spontaneous. I had cash all the time. I had cute clothes. I would go shopping for cute clothes. I 
If I wanted to buy a car, I'd buy a car. If I wanted to buy jewelry, if I wanted to get my hair done, if I wanted to do whatever I wanted to do, if I wanted to go ran randomly to, you know, on a road trip somewhere or go to LA or go to Miami or whatever, we always knew somebody there. We never had to pay to get into places. It was like VIP treatment no matter where we went. Not to mention that a lot of those people that I ran with became famous and are now on TV or they are, you know, uh, whether on, on different TV shows or, or calendars or, um, it's, it has become a constant reminder to me of the life that I chose, that I, that I did not choose to continue on that path. And so tonight was a huge flashback of the life that I used to lead. And, um, and the crazy part is, is that one of my close friends used to be an A-list, it is an A-list celebrity. Like if I said his name right now, you guys would probably fall out of your chair. And so it's been a very difficult thing for me to, um, to be confronted with my past over and over and know that I am still in a place of not not being a success yet in my own way with my own skills and my own talents so I'm saying all this to say that you know all this time for the last maybe nine years I have worked really hard to become this the woman of God and the mentor and you know just the the, the person that I that I long to be and all this time, even in my trials, even the last, you know, few years that my life has, you know, been really difficult, even in that, I always felt like I had the strength to overcome anything, no matter what. And that it was really easy for me to to kind of judge the people around me. Not not in a not in the way that you think, but as far as the temptation issue. You know, well, why can't they just choose this? Why can't they just go in this direction? Why can't they just stop doing this? Why can't they just, you know, shift their life, make better decisions and, and just not live that lifestyle anymore? And for me, it has always come easy to kind of change my life and become this person. And I never looked back. But tonight I was confronted with my past in an unexpected way. And I wanted to share that with you because I realized for the very first time that no matter how strong you are, no matter how spiritual you are no matter how much that you read your read your word no matter how much that you worship no matter how long you live a life faithful to Jesus and um, you know no matter how strong of a Christian you think you are God will put you in situations that will check your pride and check your confidence so that you realize that at any moment you can be tempted to go back to the, the person that you were. And I just want to interject here that a lot of you or some of you might, that are watching this, I don't even know if you believe in God or not, but some of you might think, well, what's wrong with that life? What's wrong with, you know, going out and having fun and, and going to the club and having some drinks and, you know, hanging out, making out with random guys, girls, whatever, you know, it's just fun. That's just youth, you know, that's what we do when we're young. And the sad part is, is that I get it. I get that feeling and I get that temptation, but that's the game. That's the temptation. That is that is the bait. Because that leads to nowhere. That leads to nowhere. And it is a still a place of loneliness. It is still a place of unfulfillment. It is still a place of unmet desires. And it's like, it's like this crazy cycle of continuing to meet this temporary need, this, this fleshly desire and going out there because I felt it tonight. That draw is strong. Can I just tell you that draw is strong to be out in the world and to dance and to have a good time and to let go and to have a few drinks and to meet people and, you know, just to be free. That temptation seems harmless. That temptation is strong. But I lived that life for like a decade. And all it did 
was postpone my success, was postpone me actually getting to the place where I'm supposed to be. So I literally just walked around the desert like for 40 years. That's what it feels like. I feel like I lost a decade of my life because I wanted to have fun. And now I have that that thorn in my side that every time I go out, I have these memories. I have these memories of being around famous people. I have these memories of, you know, living this lavish lifestyle of having fun, of traveling, of being, you know, just carefree and and not considering anyone else and being around beautiful people all the time and satisfying all of my desires. And I can't believe that even knowing what I know now about my life and about how fulfilling it is to live the life that I'm living and how I would choose this in my mind, I would choose this life over and over again. And I wish that I had chosen to live this life before I got into that life, I wish I would have done it that way. Because now I have these ties, now I have these memories, now I have these things that 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 can literally just draw me into that life again if I do not check myself and if I do not have a line that I draw and if I do not have boundaries with certain things and certain places that I go to and certain limit. You know what I mean? It's like no one no one is too no one is strong enough to not ever be tempted you know the word of god says our flesh is willing our, i'm sorry our, our flesh is weak but our spirit is willing our spirit is willing but our flesh is weak that's all of us that's pastors that's priests that's every kind of spiritual person that you you know however strong they are our spirit is willing but our flesh is weak you know and the word of god it says if if your arm or your leg causes you to stumble, cut it off. Not because you're supposed to be this like uber pious, boring person, but because it is that dangerous to, to fall into that temptation because it leads nowhere. It leads into like, all I can picture is this cyclone, this like hurricane, like, you know, sometimes you're in the eye of the storm, but you're living this life, this party life, and you're just kind of stuck in this place. You could be succeeding. You could have a ton of boyfriends or girlfriends. You could have fun. You could have money. You could, you know, have cute clothes and an awesome, you know, lifestyle on the outside. But in your heart and in your mind, something is missing. And you're just constantly stuck in this place. Like, okay, when, when, like it is just, it's like a torment, but it's like this awkward, confusing place because you don't understand why you're tormented. You don't understand why you're not fulfilled. You don't understand why you are still struggling with this when everything else looks like it's put together. Oh, it's just such a crazy dynamic. It is such a, a difficult thing to communicate to people. Because most people will look at a Christian's life and be like, why would I want to keep myself from doing fun things? And why would I want to hold back from this and this and this? Because it leads to this cyclone, this cycle, this never ending cycle that you just can't seem to get out of. And you don't know why, you know, it's like confusion and you're, you're just lost and you're just, you know, you have great days and you're just on top of the world. But then at the end of your life or like halfway through life, you're just like, why am I still missing something? I'm still unhappy. I'm still unfulfilled. I mean, on a daily basis, I fulfill these temporary needs and I, you know, I get everything I want and all my fleshly desires are met. But there is nothing like the feeling of the fulfillment that I have walking this life with my heavenly father. Like, and this is somebody that, I'm telling you guys, you have no idea who I was before. And maybe one day I'll be able to gather my thoughts enough to tell you this story. But like, I was in the scene. I had cash. I had fun all the time. I traveled a lot. I had a ton of friends. I promoted nights. I I knew everybody in the city. And, and it started to get like that in Orlando too. Like, we were the cool kids. We were the kids that, you know, worked at the bars, that got what we wanted, that never stood in lines, that, you know, got the guys, got the girls, whatever. 
that life does not even compare to the life that I have now. So anyway, I just wanted to put that out there because I just wanted to, to warn you guys that it is a slippery slope, that you don't have to be an addict, you don't have to have crazy obvious issues to be a vulnerable person when it comes to temptation. Like it doesn't have to be alcohol or drugs that you crave. You could have a temptation that looks that is so subtle that could be completely, and it could suck you in. It could suck you back in and then you wonder why you're stuck. You wonder why you're stuck. Is it anger? Is it your language? What is it? You know, is it jealousy? What is that thing that still plagues you that you can't get rid of? It's not your personality. Don't let, don't let the world tell you or society tell you that this is just how I am because that's not how you are. That's not what you were made for. So I'm going to stop here because I'm already at 16 minutes, but I wanted, I felt it was important for me to share this with you because I know what it's like to be tempted and I know what it's like to, to be hurt. I know what it's like to be disappointed in a church, to be disappointed in church people. I know what that's like, but that's not a reflection of God. That's not who he is. People are broken. People are messed up. But I'm not going to let a person that has hurt me, no matter how many people say they're Christian, I know when you read the word of God and you know who he is for yourself and you encounter somebody that stabs you in the back or that isn't there for you or that, you know, turns their back on you for some reason, that's not the character of God and that's not God. <sighs> this is a heavy subject. So I hope this brings some light, some revelation to some of you. It's super important to have boundaries because you never know when you're going to be tempted. You guys have a good night. Thank you for letting me share and I'll talk to you soon.